The Lord of the Rings. The Rings of Power. The first ever review I have had to speak with a lawyer friend of mine before to see what I could say or not. Because hey, if you want to skip straight to the review and not hear the context I'm going to be adding here, timestamp right there. That's a spoiler free review of the first two episodes of The Rings of Power. But the last time I reviewed an Amazon Prime project, things got weird here in the Goblin Horde and I've never really addressed it publicly and I would like to do so now because obviously there's going to be the highest percentage of people returning from the last time I talked about an Amazon Prime project. For those of you who are completely unaware, I went to the Wheel of Time premiere and I want to make it absolutely clear. When it comes to the development of shows like these, there are two separate groups of people. There are the artists who are working on the show, who sometimes even work for multiple studios, which was actually the case for Wheel of Time. They work for Prime Studios and Sony. I have nothing but positive things to say about those people. No matter how negative I got in the show, no issue was ever there. I cannot say the same thing about my relationship with the studio behind the project project itself. I cannot get into details, but what I will say is that I am not someone who can ever be talked into being a team player. And it was immensely frustrating for me to have people accusing me of being somehow bought and paid for by Amazon when I was just giving my honest take on the Wheel of Time show while simultaneously having a more and more negative taste put in my mouth towards the studio behind the development of the show, and I had to work really hard to keep that out of my review. No shade towards any content creator who wants to work with Prime Studios in the future, but they are just an absolute no-go forever for me due to just seems a misalignment between my belief of where lines should be drawn in relationships like that and where they, it felt to me, overextended a bit. Why do I add this context aside from just trying to clear the air around something that has weighed on me for a long time? Because frankly, there was a part of me that was looking forward to Rings of Power being a massive disappointment so I could just absolutely go nuts on one of this studio's projects. That would be dishonest in this case. I have a lot of criticisms for the Rings of Power, but overall it has exceeded my expectations, which were pretty low going into it. Totally unrelated to what we're talking about here, but if you're a content creator who specializes in the area of review, this might sound obvious, but I'm an idiot. Never ever put yourself in a situation where you are not in final control of the edit of your words. You'd be amazed at what people can do. But before we get into the review, a quick word from today Today's sponsor. Keyboard time. So Drop sent me some keyboards to unbox for a sponsorship opportunity. Let's go ahead and talk about these. I'm severely jet lagged. This is durable. It's got a solid metal bottom and it feels really good in the hand. God, that's weighty. That's the heaviest keyboard I've ever owned. Love a small little attention to detail. That helped me to get the wires. But you also get keycap remover, which if you've ever replaced keyboard caps, important. Alternate keycaps that are orange. Detailed images on the screen now. So this is the Dwarven keyboard. It's got a pretty good click clackety clackness to it. Let's do the elf one. Is the elfin edition. Same good click clackiness to it. Same really solid build. And I was expecting to like the elven one more, but just because of like the darker aesthetic, I think I'm gonna go the dwarven one. So I've been using this for about a week now and yeah, I've been really enjoying it. I definitely ended up going with the dwarven one and I think they're pretty spectacular. They're available for pre-order now for 170. They'll be shipping in October. And once they're no longer available for pre-order and they're just released, they're gonna be retailing for 200. So they're definitely in that upper echelon of like premium keyboard. And I just wasn't expecting that. And they definitely fit it. So sponsorship approved. And I gave you a little bit of a look of what I go through before I approve sponsorships here on the channel. The Rings of Power from Amazon to me has kind of just asked the questions, could a relatively inexperienced studio simply buy their way into having a great show. And the Rings of Power feels like the end result of asking that very specific question. Can you just hurl money at a project until the return you get is so great that you end up with a masterpiece? The answer is no. But what you end up getting feels to me personally so exponentially different from anything else on any streaming service that it's definitely worth a watch and has a lot of potential. We're already seeing this talked about in probably every review out there, but visually this show is absolutely stunning. Yes, there are weaker shots occasionally here and there, but hell, those existed in the original Lord of the Rings trilogy as well. Remember that, like, awkward overlaid faces thing that did not hold up or flying Gandalf through the air. <laughs> On that visual level, the sum of its parts, the special effects look spectacular. 
spectacular. It does, at least in my subjective opinion, make me feel like I am watching a show that is taking place in the second age. The level of architecture and whimsy and magic is sublime. And just mad kudos to the insane number of VFX studios who apparently worked on this project. You did good. I'm also kind of jealous of those artists. I've always wanted to work on special effects for a show that's fantasy like this, especially Tolkien. But beyond the visual effects, the sets that are practical and there, the costuming look far better than what my expectation was set at, even after watching trailers. And the overall visual style they've chosen, while it's not personally my favorite, is so committed to that it ends up being immersive and you as a viewer just, yes, are consistently in this vibe that is a bit too clean for me, but with it being the second age, I think that preference on my end is wrong. It should be this clean and dirty. It, there's definitely dirty elements here that blend enough together to make it feel like here are second age elves versus second age halflings. And one final specific shout out to just the look of the goblins and orcs. Wow, they look ah, the best I've ever seen. I am in love with them. My people! So while the aesthetic isn't my favorite choice, it's done so well that I'm not complaining. It's absolutely a vibe they have succeeded in crafting. My issues start coming in on the storytelling level. They have committed to a slow burn, it seems, where there is just setup, 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 setup happening for these first two episodes. You put the runtime of these two episodes together, you're well over feature length, and we are still, it seems, deep in setup territory, just to emphasize how extreme that is. And the end result is I have not really felt personally connected to most of the characters they're establishing. Without getting into spoilers, I care quite a bit about what's happening with the elves and the dwarves, but the plot lines outside of that, I'm just not into yet. And on my second channel, I recently discussed the movie Ran with my friend Noah, and we talked about how there were extremely different acting styles brought into that movie. I'm getting that a bit here as well, but because it's from like literally different races, it works. Like, yes, the way that elven characters are performing is immensely different than Dwarven. And that's actually, again, just adding into that pull, into the atmosphere that this show is so successfully achieving. I would say one of the few areas in terms of this side of the review, the presentation of the show, that I've been a bit disappointed are the action sequences, which haven't been that many yet, but with some choices that felt a bit too stylized or a bit too choreographed. Also, a blood flick on the lens I just wasn't a big fan of. I'm still waiting for the action to reach the potential I know this show has within it. Though, in terms of a battle sequence that's early on in episode one, magnificent. It's not the same kind of structured fight back and forth. It's more just a look on a battle that's ongoing. And it was one of my favorite just quick flashes I've seen in years of a battle. You'll be seeing that exact sequence put in those like action trailer compilations for decades here on YouTube. My heaviest criticism for Rings of Power though comes in with its pacing and structure. This slow burn, this just cut, 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 cut is resulting in a bit of the same same issue I had with Endgame from Marvel, that it fails to maintain a narrative momentum that has me not feeling like I'm watching a show or, in Endgame's case, a movie. What I mean by this, because I realize it sounds like I'd be talking about the actual editing of the show, I'm talking about the pace at which it's cutting between character plot lines. Every time I start to really emotionally connect to what's coming on, become invested, we flick over to something else and another plot line that eventually, of course, will come together. But right now for this setup, that side of the show is failing to hook me. And then in one final area of criticism that I have decided to divorce from my overall rating of the show is in how it is an adaptation. Because it's reminding me of The Shining, a movie that is a godly level movie. It's one of the greatest horror movies ever made. In fact, it's probably the most common answer I get whenever I ask people what their favorite horror movies are. The Shining is a masterpiece. As an adaptation of Stephen King's book, it's a failure. It does not actually tell the same story or have, in my opinion and spirit, the same characters because of how much they are turned. And here for Rings of Power, that is the same case. This does not feel faithful to Tolkien's vision of the characters or the world. 
really at all to me. It is a very loose interpretation and then just shifting of major things to get a narrative that would work for television. And that's the reason I'm kind of divorcing it from my overall end criticism of the show. It's just definitely worth pointing out because it's another great example of, I actually believe them making the right call. As a Tolkien fan, it is a bit it's jarring. It's extremely jarring, honestly. But as someone who's just approaching this season of television, I also just don't know how else you could do it. Because you couldn't tell a story of the Second Age as it's presented narratively in the books without either just taking a very small story and inflating it to a point where it would be like the Hobbit movies or restructuring a bunch of things to be what the Rings of Power is. So yeah, it's a bit like, ah but you didn't really have any other choice. Just cutting off the inevitable comment of like, well, the choice was to not make the show. No, it wasn't because they need to make money. I can't imagine though, if Christopher Tolkien, as I recently discovered, hated the Lord of the Rings movies for being like teenage boy action movies, as he put it, I cannot imagine what he would have to say about this show. I'm absolutely invested enough to make it to the end. And I think there is, with all of this setup, a firm enough foundation being laid that I am intrigued I'm enticed while well, having not been successfully emerged in the narrative, but very successfully placed in the world. Because Rings of Power has answered the question, what happens if you just throw an ungodly amount of money at a project? And the answer is you do just end up buying a certain level of quality that succeeds in being interesting enough to be a decent TV show. But this leaves me with one final question for you. The Goblins. Do you want to see me do episode by episode reviews of House of the Dragon, of Rings of Power, which would become a large percentage of the content here on the channel until the seasons are over, which would just be a brief period of time? Or would you rather I just do these first couple episode reviews I've done and then check in once the season is over, which wouldn't be as good for me for views, but would also allow me to get further through some other projects I have going on? Let me know in the comments down below. I very much so look forward to seeing what the overall consensus is. I might even have a poll pinned in the top comment for people to vote. But this has just been your review of Amazon's Rings of Power, first two episodes. Like and subscribe if you have not already, and hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. Have a good one, y'all. Peace.